And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. Of course, another day, another great show ahead, presented by our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. Visit them now at bangtail.com to get the order into as well. And, of course, Honky Talk Texas, our sponsors out there, too, do a great job keeping us going out there. KKTC, True Country, 99.9 in Taos, New Mexico, and up into Colorado. You can also check us out at hightidecountry.net and powered by the Sports Guys of podcast.com. And I told you we had a good one for you today. Uh, they got back together, kind of a reincarnation, and, of course, uh, a reunion, if you will. And a new single is called uh, No Tomorrow. And uh, Heartland member Mike Myerson joins us here on the Backstage Pass. Mike, how you doing? Man, I'm good, Brandon. How you doing today, buddy? Good to see you, man. And I love already what's behind you. So the decor behind you has got 100% approval from me, no doubt about it. <laughs> uh, fantastic, too. Uh, kind of talk to me, Mike, about this kind of reunion or reincarnation, if you will, whatever word you choose to use here, because obviously any great bands, you know, go through uh, – I guess, uh, for lack of a better term, break up and then, of course, get back together. But a lot of reasons for you guys to to reunite and then put out this great single called No Tomorrow. Yeah, the uh, the band, uh, you know, for more or less tailed off uh, around 2008, 2009, uh, about three years after we first hit. Um, you know, uh, families happened, kids happened. And uh, we had the opportunity at the tail end of last year to, uh, to pick the name back up. Uh, and I got a call. Uh, from one of the original members, and uh, he's like, hey, uh, Mike, how would you feel about rebooting the band? If you had asked me the day before if I'd ever heard that again, I'd have told you you were crazy. I mean, it was something, that great chapter. I'd put it to bed, moved on with it. But, uh, man, it's 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 cool to get to, uh, to get to get some of the flowers, you know, that we may have missed the first time uh, and, and get a chance to do it all over again, man. I'm super excited about it. You know, when you look back at a success, you know, once you guys had a taste of this thing back in 05, 06, I mean, I'm in college, I'm DJing radio too at the same time. And there's a song that comes on, you might've heard of it too, called I Loved Her First. And it just actually went <laughs> uh, viral at the same time. Uh, I mean, gold, platinum records, things like this, success. It just takes one in, in country music too, but that song to, to live on uh, for a lifetime. And of course, uh, you guys just had another Great accomplishment. Talk about that too, as well, because this song is going to live on forever. It's insane to me when uh, the first time I heard it uh, at a songwriter's night, uh, Walt Aldridge was performing, and uh, he had done uh, "No Getting Over Me" for Ronnie Millsap, uh, "Modern Day Bonnie and Clyde" for Travis Tritt. He'd had some hits, and nobody had cut "I Loved Her First. He played it, and I've, I have a daughter, and it blew my mind. And uh, he agreed to work with us, uh, helped us. Uh, we recorded in Fame Studios over in Muscle Shoals, and. Uh, we cut that song and the song that you hear on the radio is the demo, the $800 demo that we cut that they mastered. Uh, and, uh, you know, had no idea that it was going to be a, as big as it was. And I think the cool thing about it is how many people it's, it's touched, um, you know, every wedding season, it, it'll creep back into the charts and you hear stories about it reuniting mothers, daughter, uh, mothers and uh, sorry, uh, daughters and fathers um, about uh, what an uh, impact it's had on people's lives. So that, that's super cool. Yeah, you know, I wanted to ask you too, Mike, about, uh, you know, that RIAA uh, platinum gold streaming certifications for it and the uh, plaques presented by the Alabama Music Hall of Fame. When you guys got the news there for that particular tune that just went, you know, viral back in 06, 07, when you got the word that Alabama Music Hall of Fame was the awards and people say we don't do this for the, the industry type of thing when it comes to recognition, what have you. But it's always good that country music fans and somebody's listening out there to make these awards possible, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the uh, Alabama Music Hall of Fame has been uh, been really good to us. Uh, they opened a display for us back in 2017. Uh, we were uh, achievers, not yet members. Uh, so, uh, you know, that, that was a good first step toward toward the membership. And when it came time to do the RIAA plaque certification, uh, again, one of the, the flowers that we were able to pick up that we didn't get to do the first time. Um, it was nice that we got to do it with them in conjunction. And again, they've always been very kind to us. You know, when you look at the the band itself, you mentioned with uh, Craig and, of course, Todd and yourself, and uh, you guys have a new lead vocalist, uh, Lance Horton, too, as well. Talk about that and just the chemistry it takes to uh, put all this together, have the, the great members that you had, you know, back in the day when the band first came out. But, of course, Lance and his lead vocals now on the single, No Tomorrow. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I met uh, Todd and Craig Anderson uh, back in uh, 94. We were kids. I mean, some of us just out of high school. And uh, you know, when, uh, you know, when we signed uh, the deal, uh, there were four guys of the original four that signed the deal. Uh, the vocalist that we had had some vocal issues. Um, so when it came time to reboot, uh, we had been working with Lance um, on some other projects and it was just a natural fit. It was a no brainer uh, that, that he was going to be included. And he brings such a great energy to the band. Um, he's a, a great vocalist and he's just a good dude just overall and, and fit right in with us. You know, it's tough to fit in with a band that's been playing together 30 years. Um, but he just stepped right into the role. And, uh, and again, a great guy, a great vocalist, and, and it's been a good fit. You know, back to the album, Mike, too, with uh, I Loved Her First. I mean, no doubt that the tune itself. But there were other great songs I wanted to kind of, you know, touch on, too, besides just the number one hit. But uh, one of my favorites from that album was uh, Mississippi Mud. Let's kind of talk about that one, too, a little bit and, and kind of get a little backstory as far as the writing and a little bit of uh, I'm sure there's a great for every song. There's a great story behind it, right? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, when we met with Walt the first time and, and you know, got to uh, be able to work with him, uh, this was back uh, before uh, email was very prevalent. Uh, snail mail. He snail mailed us a CD and uh, we cut uh, four songs, uh, four demos initially. Uh, one of them was I Loved Her First. And it's funny, a Mississippi Mud was one of the other uh, the two demos that actually made it onto the album. And uh, Walt was a co-writer on Mississippi Mud. And, uh, you know, we've been playing that one in the show for for a while before we actually uh, before we actually recorded. And I'm glad that one made it on. People connected that song. Uh, you know, it's just one of those ones, uh, you know, hometown uh, connections, you know, it, it themed throughout the song. So uh, that was one of my favorite ones off the album. I think that was a strong one. I'd like to have seen that one been a single, honestly. You know, and you got no doubt it should have been too as well. Love that song too. Uh, you guys put out No Tomorrow uh, September 15th. Just talk about how the fans have kind of flocked to that song. You mentioned that, you know, just kind of that hunger and that thirst to have Heartland back together. But putting out a single of this magnitude already and it's doing its thing on a number of charts, the success of this and this song is fantastic. Yeah, when uh, it came time to, uh, you know, reboot the project, there were several songs that, that came down the pipe. Um, no Tomorrow, you know, has got uh, Jordan Schmidt is one of the writers that wrote uh, uh, Wait in the Truck for Hardy and uh, and wrote uh, uh, the new Mitchell Tenpenny song, co-wrote it, The Bigger Mistakes. So it's got some big time songwriters on it and we were privileged to be able to cut it. And it No Tomorrow really speaks to kind of where we're at in life. You know, uh, you have songs about girls and mud and trucks and all, but, you know, when you talk about, you know, seizing the moment and, and where we're at right now, that song really spoke to kind of the vibe of where the band was at. And we've been fortunate that people, uh, you know, there's a real resurgence right now in nineties and two thousands country. Uh, the guys and girls that were kids, maybe when, uh, when that music was out now are adults and have kids of their own. And they, that nostalgia throwback thing, I think you see that throughout country music right now, you've got collaborations going on and, and, you know, people like kind of recutting songs and like uh, putting hooks of old songs and new songs. Um, so we've been really pleased and, and really thankful for all the people that are, are fired up about the new Heartland. I'm fired up to talk about some more music here. And of course, you guys are going to be busy going into 2024. Uh, and we'll come back after a quick time out of friends at Banktail Whiskey here on the Backstage Pass, uh, powered by the Sports Guys of Podcast.com. More with Heartland member. Mike Meyerson on the show. Quick timeout. Coming back, talk about some more music from the first album. And, of course, the plans coming up for 2024. Back in a flash. Stay tuned. The Bangtail Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... 
And, of course, out there, KKTC, our newest station out there, True Country. It's House New Mexico 99.9 and via the LMNOC, the streaming app out there, too, broadcasting. You can check us out there. 10 Mountain Time, five days a week out there, too. And, of course, High Tide Country. Uh, .net. Back here with Mike Meyerson of the band Heartland, a new single, No Tomorrow. I get it across all those digital platforms. Uh, I love from the album, Mike, the first one that came out. Of course, I loved her first. Uh, Built to Last. Let's dive into that one. Yeah, the, uh, a good story about that one. Um, so Walt Aldridge uh, wrote I Loved Her First. Uh, he co-wrote it with a guy named Elliot Park, um, who, who had run a songwriting contest right with a Nashville songwriter. Elliot uh, wrote in one came to Nashville and uh, co-wrote I Loved Her First with Walt. His second submission was uh, Built to Last. And, you know, it, it kind of it was an end cap song. Yeah, the I Loved Her First when you first get married, the Built to Last uh, based on the anniversaries. And uh, from that song, we developed a nice relationship with Lou Casey Boots because they're mentioned in the song. Um, but uh, that's a big favorite of mine. It's a, it's a, a really great song and, and, you know, speaks to that longevity of relationship and marriage that, uh, that I Loved Her First kind of kicks off. You know, this business is so tough, as you guys know. Like I said, when y'all came out and burst on the scene back in the day, we talked about that. And you, know, you see so many new artists, Mike, kind of going through uh, everything now to try to get to the top and, you know, get that one hit, you know, get that single uh, pushed to radio. What people don't see sometimes, at least I get told in these conversations, is the work that goes on behind the scenes. Without a good team, it's hard to do this, even as a solo artist, much less a band. Talk about just the things that people may not see behind the scenes of kind of where some of the real work goes on. Yeah, there are, uh, we're fortunate uh, this go around. The first time we kind of largely did everything ourselves uh, because we were, you know, more or less an indie artist, um, didn't have that major, major label support that a lot of the people have uh, for distribution and whatnot. But this time around, uh, we've got Johnstone Entertainment as our management. Um, of course, we've got our great PR company. Um, we've got, uh, you know, some of the uh, Sony Red is with us now and uh, a social media team um, There's just so much that goes on. And it's nice now that, uh, you know, uh, rather than having to be in the nuts and bolts of the business end of it, I can just show up and smile and play guitar. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's pretty refreshing, you know, to be able to do that. Uh, you know, it's going to be kind of cool. Talk to me about some of the goals and aspirations now, writing the single note tomorrow and, of course, looking forward to. Uh, hopefully some new music in 2024 and you guys are going to be busy on the road as you got added to a number of shows in 2024. Right. Um, one of the, uh, one of the goals uh, was to release new music, uh, you know, new videos and, and get out there and see the people that we haven't seen in so many years. Um, you know, we're, we're getting messages on, on social and everything, you know, Hey, come to so-and-so we want to see you at so-and-so because we, you know, we played so many shows in, in those three years that we were out. So, yeah, uh, the goal is we've got a new album in the can. We're done. Um, in the first quarter, you'll see uh, a, a new single, a new video, and the album release is what we're looking for. And then, man, we want to get out there and see everybody. Um, it's been a long time. And uh, like I said, we had so so many great friends, um, you know, just all over the country and, and radio and, and, and everything. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to, to getting out there and seeing everybody. That was a bucket list thing of mine. Hey, you know, they asked me, Mike, what do you want, you know, going into this? I want to play guitar, man. I want to get out there and jump around and have a good time. <laughs> do what you love to do, what you do best, too, as well. And I know you guys mentioned those lineups, too. It's great to see the live shows, you know, really thriving again out there, too, for a number of artists, too, tours and, you know, people, uh, support acts opening for the major headliners, too. But you guys have had your fair share of them, too, with, uh, you know, the, the Morgan Wallens and, of course, uh, you know, Jelly Rolls taking off right now, too, and Cody Johnson and, uh, Parker McCollum is good friends of the show here too. I've got to talk to Parker on the show. And it, it's just cool to see country music kind of, again, that word thriving. I love to use it because it's got a great heartbeat to it. Having you guys back in the mix out there too. And just talk about getting back on that road again. And like you said, playing for those fans, because those people do spend that hard earned money to come buy a ticket and always say, guys, go buy merch, not just a ticket to the concert too, because you're helping out an artist so much. And then I love, you know, the old vinyl records, I think starting to make a comeback too. And just getting out there again, playing with those type of artists and taking the stage again has to feel good. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it, the people, uh, you know, are really what drives it. They are the consumer. They are who you are doing it for. And to be able to appeal to them uh, on that level is just the greatest thing. There's nothing, no, I, you can't describe it to somebody that's never done it. There's nothing like getting out there in front of 80,000 and, and having them sing your songs back to you 
and and waiting to you know being a kid that grew up you know watching you know the 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 Van Halens and the uh, you know the 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 country artists that you love so much and seeing them out on stage and the dreaming of one day doing that and then getting to step out there it's better than any high that you can produce natural or man made to get out there in front of people and just hear that noise uh, of of them and then see them afterwards take all the pictures I mean we were always ones never anybody down you want a picture you want us to sign something uh, man it's such a blessing to be in that position to be able to you know to, to bless people back that way and, and interact with them and, and and it shows now the friendships and the relationships that we made back then because they're still there they were they were waiting on us uh, and you know when we relaunched it was just a rush uh, coming back in uh, of all these people that I, I think they were just waiting, man. They were just waiting on us to come back. And it, it's, it's so cool. You know, I want to ask you too, cause we're seeing this relaunch now, not just you guys, but I know there's another band who I'm a good, good friends with too out there. And I just saw them at country radio seminar uh, this past March when they had it too. And it's always good to run into them. I know you guys have probably done some things with them before because collaboration is super important in this industry, but McBride and the ride just recently, Terry McBride and those guys, we're getting back together and relaunching some things there. And uh, you see these groups kind of doing this, you know, superstar groups and like you guys were back in the day. And I think it's, it's healthy because people are, are clamoring again for that 90s country sound. You know, so much music and, and not to not to detract from any any of the sure. genres. I, I'm a big fan of all types of music, mm -hmm. but there's something organic about country music, especially some of that throwback country like your uh, Shenandoah is doing a thing. They just had a big deal with Luke Combs not long ago. They recorded Two Dozen Roses. Um, you've got uh, Alabama is back out on the road. They're doing June Jam again. They did the first one this year. We're trying to get on for next year. We played the last June Jam in 97. Um, uh, I think that that's what it is. Country music, especially some of that some of that older stuff, is is very organic and it, it's not mechanical at all. It's, it's, it's strings and voices and vibrations. And I think it really it really touches people in, in a way that some of the you know, not that I don't like, you know, the electronica kind of stuff. That's cool, too. And that, that has a level of creativity and, and artistry that goes into it. And I don't degrade from that. But, man, country music has just got that dirt to it. It's just got that hometown, uh, you know, reminds you of your your folks. And, and, and there are a lot of those songs are little mile markers in your life. I think for me so much, it's that way, you know, like listening to Bride and the Ride, going and seeing a, a Alabama and Clint Black were my first country concert I ever went to. And, you know, seeing those guys and hearing them and they sound so good still, um, you know, that that kind of music you can replicate later in your career where some of the rock stuff and all that. Sometimes that's hard for those guys to pull off, uh, David Lee Roth. But, um, you know, now, you know, that that kind of music, it, it has longevity to it. Country music has that longevity, I think. It does. And I think, like you said, the, the, the fans speak for themselves. I read comments on social media all the time, too, when I get a chance. And they love their 90s, early 2000s, mid-2000s uh, country sound, no doubt, too. And it's good to see you guys back in there. Well, I tell you what, we've got to take a time out. We come back, we're going to get dirty here on the show. <laughs> the Backstage Pass song the guys had back in the day called Let's Get Dirty from the first album, too. And we'll talk a little bit more with Rapid Fire coming up here. It is the Backstage Pass, KKTC True Country 99.9. And, of course, out there in Towson, Mexico, Pueblo, Colorado, via the LMNOC streaming app. And, of course, out there at HighTideCountry.net. Presented by our friends at Bangtail Whiskey. More with Mike Meyerson of Heartland. Stay tuned. The Bangtail Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... Hey, back here on the show, of course, next week, Ashley Ray, Ray Scott will be coming by and a whole lot more as we get into 2024 here on the uh, Backstage Pass here, again, powered by the Sports Guys uh, Podcast.com and, of course, out there, KKTC True Country 99.9 via the LMNOC streaming app out there, too. Back here with Mike Meyerson of the group, Heartland, the single is No Tomorrow, 
across all those digital platforms just came out there September 15th. Make sure you guys go download across all the platforms. Well, I mentioned there was the tease before the break, Mike, was the Let's Get Dirty. That was one of the songs referenced to back with the first album, too. And I, a lot of people have told me to ask you about where this originated from. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, Let's Get Dirty was one of the favorites for the live show. Um, that was probably our next to last, uh, you know, in the show. And honestly, that one uh, got some traction on the charts. Um, mm -hmm. That was our choice for the second single was uh, was Let's Get Dirty. It's got kind of an ACDC vibe to yeah. it a little bit, you know, and, <laughs> and being 80s babies, um, we were big fans of hair metal and, and, and that genre. So, that one was a favorite live, and and I, I that will be in the live set uh, coming up. I guarantee you. Um, but yeah, that's a, a, a was a co written by Keith Rodenauer. Uh, is his name? He's a good good friend of the band. Um, I do. I, I write with Keith uh, from time to time. Keith uh, has a recording studio in Florida, and uh, Johnny Depp in his youth was a customer of uh, of, uh, of Keith's. He would come in, work around the studio for uh, some studio time at Keith's, uh, mm -hmm. Keith's place. Keith has got some uh, some old Johnny Depp photos, which is pretty cool. But uh, <laughs> I, I love that. That's a great story right there. Uh, I love this one, too, from the album. And I hope it's back. Uh, Free Bird and a Fire Bird. Uh, I love that, too. It's just a great song. Tough to pronounce. Say that five times fast, right? <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, try singing it. Now, uh, that uh, one of the... Uh, uh, so of course the Skinner Skinner reference, you know, mm -hmm. being a Southern child, you know, uh, uh, Skinner was was a big influence on us. And uh, one of the uh, I, I want to say it was uh, it was Ricky Metlock um, that actually played on that uh, in the studio. Um, uh, the the little guitar break in it, um, I believe he was the uh, the gentleman that I actually uh, played on that. Was the original lead singer for Blackfoot that later played with Skinner. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, Freebird and a Firebird. Uh, that was one of my favorites to play live because that was kind of my style of guitar um that uh, uh that skinner billy gibbons stevie ray kind of thing was always my flavor of, of of tea if you will so that one was a lot of fun to play live i love that song of doubt and i'm guessing probably going to be back in that rotation <laughs> we get to a heartland live show at least because you guys uh, y'all uh, jammed out in that all right uh Time for a little rapid fire. We'll finish up with this because I love it too. Uh, Christmas traditions with the holidays coming up here. We just passed Thanksgiving. Uh, where do you spend Christmas? Uh, obviously with the family. Where do you guys go? Do you travel? Any Christmas traditions? Uh, we usually stay home for Christmas. Um, you know, the, the kids are, we're kind of empty nesters now, my wife and I. So uh, we did Death Race 3000 for Thanksgiving where every stinking day was something different. So <laughs> This Christmas is going to be at home. Uh, you know, we we hang out with friends and do things with them. We have breakfast brunch with some some really good friends of ours. Uh, uh, you know, uh, for you know for Christmas. So uh, just sit around the fire and watch Christmas Vacation uh, nine hundred times on repeat. That's kind of our Christmas tradition. <laughs> I love that. And for me, it was growing up. It was Home Alone. It was National Lampoons. You're right, and it was all the the movies kind of mixed in there. And you look at AMC; they're playing Elf like twenty four hours a day now. Yeah, um, it's not Christmas time until Hans Gruber falls off Nakatomi Plaza. <laughs> you got to love those old great uh, movies out there, too. Always classics, just like uh, good tunes are, too, as well. All right, uh, favorite food on the holiday list or somebody cooks? What do you enjoy eating? Um, my mother's cornbread dressing uh, is my mm. absolute. I could lay, lay it in the floor and roll around in it. It is so good. <laughs> uh, she tried to, She taught me how to make it. Uh, she left out an ingredient, so it wouldn't be exactly like hers, but I discovered the secret, so now I can replicate mom's dressing. <laughs> All right, last song on the Mike Myerson playlist. What would you listen to? Um, I actually uh, listened to uh, Blackbird by the Beatles. Uh, okay. Came up on the shuffle. I'm a huge Beatles fan, and uh, that that one's particularly uh, a particular favorite. But yeah, that one came up on the rotation as I was as I was pulling in the driveway this afternoon. I had to sit in the car and, and let it get over before I got out. <laughs> All right, is there a stage that Heartland has not stepped on yet that is coming up? It's kind of that bucket list dream stage to step on. Um, you know. Right now, uh, as far as shows, um, because we're playing uh, Gulf Coast Jam uh, down in PCB uh, is, is going to be really great. I would like to. So we got to do the Ryman, uh, mm -hmm. which is just stupid crazy. Um, and, and, of course, the Grand Ole Opry, the, the new one out there. Uh, I want to do Red Rocks. I want to go play at Red Rocks. That's that's on the list for this year. I'm, 
I'm, I'm trying to get that one hooked up. But uh, yeah, and uh, the new sphere thing on Vegas. Have you seen that? That's ridiculous. I have not seen Red Rocks. I that's everybody who keeps talking. There's just a, a huge stage out there, too, and a great venue uh, to play out there, too. All right. First song you ever learned on guitar. What was it? Um, first song I ever learned on guitar was probably uh, just the chords for Freebird. Uh, I used to. Uh, <laughs> sit with one of my buddies when I was going to community college and the, and we would just play the progression just over and over again. And the, the little lady that worked in the, uh, the cafeteria, she's like, would you guys please learn a different song? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You got some good jam. Just learning those chords, uh, challenging in itself. That's All good. right. Toppings on a Mike Myerson pizza and it's just for you. What goes on it? Oh, uh, mushrooms, uh, green bell peppers, onions, uh, uh, some good stringy cheese, um, bacon, uh, I can do, uh, nothing crazy like sardines or bait. I don't do those, uh, and pineapples only for smoothies. That's about it. <laughs> you know, I tried that Mike a while back with pineapple, the Hawaiian pizza with the Canadian bacon. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. Depending on where you get it from, you're right. But right. Pineapple, it could be just for for smoothies out there too as well definitely love that <laughs> hey congratulations on uh the reunion the relaunch uh the single no tomorrow which is across all the uh digital platforms we appreciate you spending some time with us here on the backstage past mike myerson of the group heartland and hey man let's do it again in uh 2024 hope you had a great time all right brandon i appreciate you brother thanks a lot man hope to see you again soon you got it mike myerson of the group heartland out there across all the digital platforms look for him on the road in 2024 a single note tomorrow is across all the digital platforms and of course out there kktc 99.9 true country we played it the other day out there in taos new mexico and pueblo colorado and of course our friends at hightidecountry.net thanks to bangtail whiskey and our friends at honkytonktexas.us for our sponsors we'll see you guys on the flip side it is the backstage pass powered by the sports guys podcast.com have a great